All right. An old man walks into a park on a cool Sunday evening. He does that every week. Um, he normally goes there to walk his dog and then, you know, he just allows the dog to go around, play, while he sits on the bench, takes some fresh air. And after a while, he goes home to have his dinner and rest. As he sat on the bench, on the other edge of the bench, there was a young lady seated with her head in between her hands. The old man just, you know, he's always come there every Sunday. He was not interested in having conversations. He just wants, you know, to walk his dog and go home. But after a while, he observed that this young lady was sobbing and he couldn't just keep quiet. So calmly, he moved towards the young lady and asked, young lady, good evening. How are you doing? You know, the girl hearing a voice, you know, quickly, just clean her eyes. <clears throat> just clean up. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. All right. Is everything all right with you? Yeah, everything is fine. I'm good. I just, I just came here and, you know, um, but you were sobbing. Yeah. Things have not really been the best for me. I'm finding it difficult to hit my targets weekly, daily. I'm just so tired. I feel so lazy. I feel so worthless. I'm unhappy. The old man, you know, out of curiosity since that started a conversation already, asked, so what are the things that you you call your targets, that you are feeling behind on these targets and all? And the young lady, you know, listed out the things, her family, you know, the work, her professional um, career and all of those things. And the old man was, okay, so all of these things you've listed, your family, your career, the job that you're doing and all the things that you have to do, your hobbies and all of that. Do you have a plan? like a daily plan that you follow? Do you have a schedule that you follow to accomplish all of this? The old lady was like, no, I don't, I don't have a plan. I don't have a schedule. I just wake up and I know that I have to go to work. I know that I have to go to my family. Then I have to go to um, study, take some courses because I'm pursuing this career and all of that. And then some days I have to go. I don't really have a plan. I just wake up and I know that I have to do things and then I go do them. The old man smiled um, after the young lady danced down. Observed that over the period, this young lady had not had a plan. She doesn't have a shadow of the things that she does daily. And so the old man said, okay, young lady, um, we are going to start with something, right? You are going to go home and write down all the activities that you engage in daily or weekly. Write them down, everything on paper. Then draw a table. On that table, fix all of these activities that you engage in daily and put timestamps on them, okay? I do this from this time to this time to this time, but do that and fix all the activities. I think that's gonna help you and you are going to see that you'll be able to do more things and feel better. The young lady smiled, they exchanged pleasantries once again, and they were on their way. By the way, the young lady's name is Naomi. So when Naomi got home, she quickly engaged in this activity, right? She wrote down all the things that she does daily. She wrote down all the things that she does weekly and all of that, and then drew a table and fixed all of these activities and put time. It was her first time doing it, so it was a little bit difficult, but then she did that. After she did that, she observed one thing, that she felt some lightness. 
it was as though she has been carrying so much load in her mind, you know, on her head, the, the thoughts of you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Like, she's been carrying all of those things on her head. So when she transferred all of the activities to paper, she felt a lot better. She was like, wow. And then when she put them on the table, they were so clear to her and, and she felt this is good. So the following day, the young lady, Naomi, set out to accomplish her task, her tasks. And so she did the first things, you know, following that and all of that. It wasn't really perfect. You know, she failed at some things and all of that, but she was able to do some things that day. And that day was a lot better than the previous day. The next one, she went again, did this, this, that. So with every new day, she was perfecting following a shadow, right? Her first time, but she was perfecting following a shadow. And after five days, she saw that she has been able to accomplish a number of things. She hit some targets, some, she was not able to get them, but she was able to accomplish a lot of things. So on Sunday evening again, this young old man, <laughs> right came again with his dog to walk his dog as he was approaching the bench where he normally sits he observed that there was a young lady that was seated on that same spot that naomi sat the previous sunday this time around he was like what's happening is god sending me another young lady to talk to about what she's going through in life i don't want to have any discussions i just want to sit there allow my dog to roam a bit come back and then i go back to have my dinner and rest but as he was about to sit down and he observed that this young lady was actually reading a book and the moment he was about to sit down, this young lady turned, lowered the book, and with a bold smile, greeted him. I said, good evening, sir. The young man, on the, the old man, you know, recalled the voice. I said, oh, Naomi, how are you doing? I'm fine, sir, I'm good. Yes, you have a bold smile today. Yes, I'm smiling because of the things that you told me are things that are working. So the old man sat down and he began discussions. So while they were discussing, talking about life, talking about how the week went and all, um, the old man asked, so tell me, how the percentage, tell me, like how much of the things that you wrote on that shadow, on that your timetable, how much of those things were you able to accomplish the past week? And Naomi went, okay, I was able to hit 50, some 50, some 40, some 70, some 80. Um, but in all, it was better than the previous weeks that um, I hadn't any shadow. The old man said, okay. Now Naomi asked, so how do I improve? I have this shadow drawn and I've started feeling for one week, but I still wouldn't want to improve. And the old man, you know, asked some more detailed question and Naomi responded. And the old man said, okay, I told you that last Sunday because I understood you didn't have a shadow. So now you have a shadow. The things I'm going to tell you now are going to help you to have a better shadow, right? They're going to help you to accomplish more than you had done the previous week. And these are going to be what I call the seven elements of an effective shadow. The seven elements of an effective shadow. And so the tips that the old man shared with this young lady, which she went home to try, are the things I'm going to share with you this evening. And number one, the old man said, when you draw a shadow, you have to be realistic. You have to be practical. A number of people, when they want to draw a shadow, they draw it by feet. 
right? They draw it irrespective of other variables around that just focused on, I want to do this, 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 and that. They do not take into consideration the time between each of these activities. It's like me drawing an activity and saying, okay, I wake up in the morning, I have to be um, in the hospital by 10 and by 11, I have to be in this place by 12, I have to be in that office by one, I have to be at home by two, I have to be in church and all of that. That's okay. However, I didn't take into consideration the fact that from my house to the hospital takes some minutes. From the hospital to that office is going to take some minutes. From that office to the church is going to take some minutes. From that church, from the church to my house is going to take some minutes, right? I, I didn't do that. I just skipped all of that and then just went 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, and all of that, right? So when you draw a schedule for you to accomplish the things that are there, you have to be realistic. You have to be practical. You don't draw your schedule by fate, right? When you want to accomplish your goals, of course, you can go by fate. You can push yourselves, yourself and all of that. But when you're writing it, be practical. Take into consideration the various variables, the timing between the activities and all of those things. And sometimes other contingencies, you can just factor in some things that you know, okay, maybe you cannot factor in contingencies, but factor in some of the things that you know surround you, okay? Put those things in there and they would help you because one thing is if you cram your schedule with several things, you would wake up having 20 things to do. And when you're not able to do all of those 20 things, you feel discouraged, you feel, you know, down, you feel as though you were lazy and all of that. But if you just map out the most important things that you have to do, two, three, four, five, six things that you have to do that day, and then it is well spelled out and you got to accomplish them, you will feel a lot better. So number one, be practical, be realistic. Then the second thing is that a schedule has to be clear and simple, all right? Clarity and simplicity is um, an important element, is an important thing that should be taken into consideration when you're drawing a schedule. If you have a schedule that you can barely read what you have to do for the day. You have to bring it close to you and zoom in for you to be able to tell what you are going to do. Chances are that you will feel demotivated. But if your schedule is clear, that is having only the important tasks in there, okay? You don't have to put, um, okay, I wake up by five, and then I have to brush my teeth for five minutes. I have to shower for 10 minutes. I have to clean my face for 20, I have to comb my hair for 30, I have to eat for 40. If you put all of those things, you are going to have basically your entire wall is going to be covered with paper of all the activities that you have to do. But choose the most important tasks that you have for that day, the most important things, and put them there one after the other, one after the other. All right, they could be six things, they could be seven things, but you just pick them up and you can see these are the things that I have to do today. All right, so it has to be clear and simple. That's the second element that a schedule must have. The third thing is that a schedule that is going to be effective must have deadlines. No schedule that doesn't have deadlines will be effective. You know, as humans, our minds tend to wander, okay? As humans, we tend to want to do so many things outside the core things that we should be focused on, okay? You know that there are priorities during the day. There are things that I must do and those things, I must do them at a certain time. 
and I must submit this project, for instance, at this time. I must visit this person and speak with him. I must have a meeting with this person at this time. I must get done with this task at this time. All of those things have to be part of your schedule. Okay, so you have your priorities and those priorities, of course, informs how you plan your schedule. And they must have deadlines. If you don't have deadlines, forget about it. You are going to be, you know, so spread apart and doing several things that you will miss all the things or most of the things that you have to accomplish in a certain time. And you will feel so terrible. So a schedule must be practical and realistic must be clear and simple, must have deadlines. And deadlines sometimes, they can actually be motivating because they help you to like focus, be disciplined on the things that you have to do. So once you are disciplined and you're focused on those things, you just keep going and going and going and hitting all of those things. So the more you are able to, you know, hit the targets and, you know, get those things done within those deadlines, you feel motivated and then you're able to continue and do other things. And then, of course, when you are done with the most important things, you can have time for fun. All right. So that's the third thing that, the third thing that a, an effective schedule must have. The fourth component that you should take into consideration when planning your schedule is time for loved ones, is time for family. This, this is very important. Apart from the fact that our families, you know, they are the most important components of our lives. All the goals that we pursue, all the projects we want to accomplish and all of that, we do that to give our lives, to give ourselves a better life and of course to give our families better lives. So apart from that fact is that when you actually give time for your family it helps you to concentrate you know when you're accomplishing a task when you are there doing this and doing that you know doing your work and all the projects that you engage in there is this thought that oh i have not given time to my family my spouse my kids you can be carrying this guilt in your heart because you've not given them time but if you allocate time every day or every week to spend with them it takes away that guilt and so you're able to focus better on your job you're able to focus better on that craft on that thing that you have to do moreover when your family sees that you dedicate time to them they're able to give you space when you want to do something that has to do with your career has to do with your job has to do with some other things right but if you don't give time to them then when you are there apart from the guilt you are you are feeling they will always disturb you but if you give time to them they're able to let you go moreover our friends and our families they motivate us right so we are we are humans we are people that don't live in isolation you need all of the motivation from your friends, from your family, from your kids, from your spouse. You need that. And so spend time with them. That is very important. Now, the fifth point is time for rest. I think this is, this is very clear. Time for rest. I mean, if you want to go throughout the day, go throughout the week, doing this and doing that, without having time for rest, your productivity is going to drop is just going to diminish. Both the quantity of the outputs and the quality of your outputs will diminish over time because you are a human having the body. So you need time besides the rest that you take at night, you know, your sleep. During the day, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on your shadow, use that to stretch your legs, walk around, rest, close your eyes, take a nap. Whatever is can be permitted in terms of rest, please take it. You need to maintain your productivity and you need to last for a long time. So rest is very important. It helps to reinvigorate you and then you start afresh. Like I've observed that if I'm able during the day, if it is possible for me and I'm able to take, you know, some minutes of rest, whether it is 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes of rest, I come out, you know, from that rest as fresh as I was when I began in the morning. So have time for rest. And the next point, the sixth point is actually similar to the fifth one. And that is time for exercise. All right. In your schedule, 
you must put time for exercise. It is very important. There is this quote from the Bible that if the axe, right, is sharp, then you need little strength. But if the axe is blunt, the instrument, if it is blunt, then you need to apply more strength to use it to fall a tree. So our body is the tool that we are using to accomplish our tasks during the day, during the week, month, year. If this body, which is the tool, is not well taken care of, is not fit, is not sharp, then you need to spend a lot of time to do the same thing. Or you may not even be able to do anything at all. If your health is broken, if your health is not good, is not well taken care of, like your body is not well taken care of, and you break down all of the things you have on your list, it will not be done. You will just be there bed reading without doing anything. But when your body is taken care of, you are able to do all the things that you have there. So time for body exercise, it's very important. No matter how little time that you put in there, please do it. Every week, plan that in your schedule. And then the seventh point, time for spiritual exercise. You know, we are spirit beings in human bodies, all right? Having the body, but we are spirit beings. So time must be taken to um, keep our spirit man fit, all right? And there is need to have some kind of gym of the spirit man because when the spirit man is living and the body is sound, both of those that terrific combinations but when the mind when the spirit man is weak is down even if your body is fit you can go up to a certain point but you can't cross that point so it is important that you also spend time to train your spirit man and as someone who is a child of god who is a christian i recommend that you spend time in prayers you spend time in reading the bible you spend time in listening to messages you spend time in playing some christian songs right all of these things build your spirit man keep you alive in the spirit and then you exercise the body and all of that you see that you're able to accomplish much so these are the seven things that this old man told the young lady naomi and naomi went doing them and she's better for it she's living a better life today without all the sense of guilt and unhappiness you know and sadness and worthlessness and all of those things all right. And by the way, the book that Naomi was reading while she was at the park at that Sunday evening is this. This book, Room 39, A Secret Worth Dying For, A Love Worth Killing For. This was the book that Naomi was reading on that Sunday evening when she met the old man. And I recommend the book. I think it's a nice book. So if you want to get the book, I'm going to leave links below where you can buy the book from any online marketplace and you will enjoy it. Or you can send me a DM and then I'll contact Naomi on your behalf and you are going to have this book. Room 39, a secret worth dying for, a love worth killing for. All right, and then I'm going to leave a design that I made, which probably is the thumbnail of this video. I'm going to leave a link below if you want to download it. It has all the seven points that we have listed, right? The fact that you, your schedule should be practical, it should be realistic, all right? Founded based on the facts around you. And then of course, when you want to accomplish the goal, you can accomplish them by faith. But then you plan with the facts, looking at the variables around you. It is very important. Number two, your schedule should be clear and simple, not clumsy, not crowded, not complicated to understand. Very simple, very clear to understand. You look at it and you can understand everything that you have to do for the day. Third, you need to have deadlines on your schedule so that you will curb your wandering mind, you stay focused, you are disciplined, and you accomplish your tasks, deadlines. Number four, you must have time for family and loved ones. They are the most important components of our lives. All we do is for us and our families. So you must have time for them and they help to motivate you. Now, time for rest is the fifth one. 
time for rest, to rest this body during the day so that you are reinvigorated and you're able to accomplish your task better. Number six, time for body exercise. You must exercise this tool. You must sharpen this tool that you are using to accomplish your tasks. If you don't have sharpened the tool, then it's not going to work. And then finally, time for spiritual exercise. Our very essence needs to be trained. Communication with God is very important. In prayers, through reading of the scriptures of the Bible, through listening to messages, through playing Christian songs, they help to build your spirit man. And God helps you and you're able to do all the things you have to do. All right. I want you to tell me, these seven tips that I said now, which... Um, of them, okay, let me say three. Tell me the three most important ones for you, all right? And in my next video, I'm going to tell you the ones that I chose. Tell me the three most important um, elements besides the seven that I know. Out of the seven that I listed, three most important points that you took from this video, all right? God bless you, and I hope to see you on the next one. Peace.